there's a new iPhone on the scene, and because it's an S model, it looks exactly like last year's iPhone. However, if you look closely, there are some slight differences. According to Apple specifications, it's one-tenth of a millimeter wider, and two-tenths taller and thicker. In most cases, that's not going to make a difference. However, in some situations, it will create a problem. If you want more information on any of these cases, click the eye as each one is mentioned to see my full video review. For rubber TPU style cases, the size differences won't be an issue. They give enough to allow for the extra size and generally speaking fit the iPhone 6s just as well as they fit the iPhone 6. With the Autobox Symmetry series here, the size difference is slightly noticeable. I was surprised at how much more difficult it was to remove the case. Urban Armor Gear is still my go-to iPhone case recommendation and it fits the iPhone 6s perfectly. Speaking of UAG, they have some new colors for the iPhone 6s available now. I have one on order and will be doing an updated review video shortly. If you're a fan of UAG, definitely click subscribe and stay tuned for that. I'll link it here once the review is live. The folio version of this case still fits great as well. If you're looking to make your iPhone almost indestructible, click the eye above to check out my review of this case where I launched my phone 15 to 20 feet in the air to concrete from a catapult. It's definitely a very rugged case. The Beeline case was already incredibly tight on the iPhone 6 to keep it from popping out when dropped. It's even worse here, and removing your iPhone is extremely difficult. I contacted Beeline cases, and they said they haven't had this issue, and that the 6S works fine in their cases. I'm not exaggerating at all how difficult this case is to remove, and I wasn't comfortable with the amount of force necessary to pry my phone from the case. Based on my experience, I wouldn't recommend this case for the iPhone 6S. However, it's a very useful and practical case for the iPhone 6. If you're a person that loves the outdoors, then you'll want to click the eye to check out my review of this very unique case. The LifeProof Nude is the one I was most concerned about not fitting. The tolerances are so tight that any additional size could easily create a problem. However, the case snaps together well and the minimal size difference probably just causes the phone to press harder against the gasket and form a better seal. The true test is seeing if it can still keep water out. The concern here is that the extra size will cause the case to flex and allow water to get in through the seams. Let's dunk it underwater and see how it does. When water testing a case, the main thing you don't want to see as the case is underwater is bubbles, indicating that air is coming out and water is going in. So far so good. After drying the case off, we see that the LifeProof Nude is still definitely waterproof. And the couple of water droplets you see on the back of the phone or from the outside of the case or my hands and can be disregarded. Since LifeProof says that new cases for the iPhone 6S are coming soon, I wouldn't recommend you purchase this case right now. If you already own it, however, and don't want to drop another $90 on a waterproof case, then you'll probably be okay. The Dog and Bone case, because of its wetsuit design, has a little more room for the new iPhone and still fits great. I recently used this case with my iPhone 6S on the lake canoeing in the rain for a couple of days because of its ability to attach a wrist strap. I'll definitely continue using this case for wet, harsh environments without hesitation. I did notice, however, that Touch ID wasn't as responsive as with the iPhone 6. Sometimes it worked flawlessly, and other times it wouldn't even recognize that I was trying to unlock the phone. It's annoying, but probably not worth buying a new case over. In most situations, the extra size difference with the iPhone 6s isn't going to matter. However, I'd recommend you refer to the manufacturer website to be certain. As for me, I'm going to continue using all the same cases I used for the iPhone 6. If you have any questions I didn't cover, feel free to leave those in the comments and I'll get back to you. If you found this video helpful, then please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. And as always, thanks for watching.